Hi everybody, Rachel here. Um, so in this video I'm going to talk about something <clears throat> that's a bit of a tricky one, really personal, something that we're going through at the minute. So Arthur is a really bright kid, he's incredibly creative, um, but what, what happened was he went to school and uh, he didn't take to reading and writing like we expected him to and it really threw us. So I'd already, pre about six months ago, went in to see his teacher and said, you know, flag this up. And she said, yep, yeah, we know, we're on it. However, I did mention to the teacher, he does reverse his D's and B's. And she said, oh yeah, they all do that. So anyway, fast forward to now, six months later, and she said, can we have a chat? And without even saying the D word, dyslexia, she, I knew that's what she was um, getting at. And she said, another teacher has done some reading with him and has flagged it up that he is reversing. He's struggling to do certain things. And what jars is that he's a really bright kid in other areas. And yeah, so in the meeting she said, um, yeah, reversals, um, lack of confidence. Um, she thinks he has visual disturbance. He's, he's lost his confidence. I think that's been the defining thing. So when we want to read or write with him, he really puts it off. And then when he, when you actually sit down and do a book with him, if he's, read, if he's read it quite a lot of times, he's quite fluent. There's a lot of guesswork going on. There's a lot of reversals going on. He looks at the picture a lot to gain the context, although that's quite normal. But I think it's to guess at what's going on. So anyway, the meeting went well. We've agreed that he sh she should do some little te further tests to kind of ascertain whether he, you know, he is, but we think he is. We talked about the coloured paper thing, so he's going to do some learning on coloured paper. Um, and he we talked about this Nessie website. I've always known that Arthur is special. And, I mean, I've always said to Adam, everybody thinks their child's really special, but I've always said to Adam, I think Arthur's, like, really, really bright and really, really creative. And what's, what, what this has thrown up is that I don't, think, I don't feel any differently. I still think he is. And I actually now think he's extra special. It does make me anxious, of course, that he will struggle. Like, learning to read and write for Arthur is going to be so much harder than it is for the kids. I've been talking to my mum and we, we've reflected that actually Arthur does funny things with his eyes sometimes. If he's been on an iPad or reading or just kind of does funny things with his eyes. You know, as though you've had a visual disturbance and you're kind of trying to straighten it out. If the teacher hadn't called us back in yesterday, Adam and I actually were quite pleased with his progress. He's reading, uh, he's writing, but what when when I would feel anxious and alarmed is when his friends came around or I'd compare what he was doing with them. Yes, it's scary. Yes, when she said in the meeting yesterday, uh, you know, later on in life, it might be that he has to has, have a scribe for an exam or have extra time for an exam. That, my heart kind of went, Ugh. So I would say as well to other parents watching this who've got kids in kind of year one and their kid is a bright kid, however the kid is not picking up handwriting and reading the same pace as their friends who you would see them as equally bright as, I would say speak to your teacher because reversals, yes, they're, they're things that normal all kids do, but it is, a, it is a red flag and it could be, you know, are they feel, feeling loss of confidence? So before I finish the video, I just wanted to read this little excerpt from this book Malcolm Gladwell, David and Goliath so this chapter is about dyslexia and he poses the question that um, he poses the question of a desirable difficulty and he talks about a really tricky test that I got wrong by the way uh, and, he, and they gave the test to all these really clever students in America and then, you know, a half or more than half got it right. What they did, they made the test even more difficult by putting the test in very faded italics. And more, a strange thing happened. More people got it right, even though they'd made the test more difficult. So from that, they got this idea of desirable difficulty. And um, what he says is this. Uh, making the questions disfluent causes people to think more deeply about whatever they come across. They'll use more resources on it they'll process more deeply or think more carefully about what's going on. If they have to overcome a hurdle, they'll overcome it better when you force them to think a little harder. So he's kind of saying that there's a silver lining to making life a bit more difficult. And he goes on to say, um, can dyslexia turn out to be a desirable difficulty? Um, an extraordinarily high number of successful entrepreneurs are dyslexic. And he goes on to list uh, famous entrepreneurs, Richard Branson, you know, the CEO of Cisco, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
And then they're talking about at an event, somebody asked, um, has anybody out here, at an event with loads of you know big business leaders, they asked, has anybody here ever been diagnosed with dyslexia or learning disorder? Or half of the hands like half of the hands went up. This book is kind of saying, you know, a lot of people who go on to succeed, are really um, really creative people have things like learning disabilities, they overcome um, difficulties because they have to be more creative through life, like they have to learn really other skills. So yeah, we're just trying to see the positive in it at the minute. So yeah, let me know, what's your experience of dyslexia? Are you dyslexic? Is your child dyslexic? When were they diagnosed? Have you got any tips for books, websites? Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and comment below. Let me know. Okay, all right. Bye.